that we'll be in sync, oh God, with what heaven is saying, what heaven is declaring, the feel of heaven, oh Lord, what you are saying, oh God. We pray, oh God, for your heartbeat, oh Lord. We pray for the mind of Christ today in the name of Jesus, oh God. It's not about our flesh, oh God. It's not about how we feel, oh God, but we want to make your name big in this earth, oh God. We want to make your name great, oh God. We want you, oh God, to draw all men unto you, oh God. So we lift you up in this place, oh Lord. We declare you as Lord over all, O oh Lord. We declare you as ruler, O oh God. You are the one that sits on the throne, O oh God. You are sovereign, O oh Lord. You know all, O oh God. You are ruler over these earth, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Thank you. All power is in your hands, O oh God. I thank you that you are the God of angel armies, O oh God. You are Jehovah's Son, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord. I thank you, O oh God, for the angels, O oh God, that are sending this, sending this place, O oh Lord. I thank you, O oh God, that you are moving and you are breathing over the contagious church, O oh God. You are moving and you are breathing, O oh God, over this service, O oh Lord. You are moving and breathing over the worship, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, O oh God. This service will give you glory, O oh God. I come against every hindrance, O oh Lord, every attack, O oh God. We go forth in power, O oh God. We go forth in might, O oh God. We go forth in the name of the Lord, O oh Lord. So we lift you up in this place, O oh God, and we glorify your mighty and your matchless name, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that you arise in this place, O oh Lord. Your word says, let God arise and let every enemy of the Lord be scattered today in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Everything that seeks to restrain and restrict, oh God, I command it to loose now in the name of Jesus. May the glory of the Lord be released, oh God. This your kind of glory, oh God, may it be released, oh God. The command glory, oh God, may it be released, oh Lord. The weight of your glory, oh God. Release your anointing, oh God. Release your power, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that we trust in the name of the Lord today, oh God. Your word says that some trust in horses, oh God, and others in chariots, oh Lord. But we trust in the name of the Lord because it's the name of the Lord to be feared. It's the name of the Lord to be reverenced, oh God. So we reverence you today, oh Lord. We reverence you as Lord of all, oh God. We reverence you as author, oh God. You are the author and the finisher of our faith in the name of Jesus. I come against despair right now in the name of Jesus. We have hope in the name of the Lord. I come against even sadness right now. I thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Release your glory, oh God. Release your wind, oh God. Release your fire, oh Lord. I pray for a new fire, oh God. A new desperation for you, oh God. More of your spirit, oh God. More of your power, oh God. More of your manifest glory, oh God. We want more of you, oh Lord. We seek after you, oh Lord. We want the things of the Lord. We want the things of heaven, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. May heaven manifest on earth today, oh God. May heaven manifest in this service today, oh God. We acknowledge you as holy, oh God. We acknowledge you as righteous, oh Lord. We acknowledge you as sovereign, oh God, and there's none like you. There is none like you, none above you, none beside you. You alone are on the throne. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the ruler, oh God. You are our master, oh Lord. You are our savior, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. There is none like you. Who are you, great man? 
feet of the King. You will bow before the feet of the King. You will bow before the feet of the King. You will bow before the feet of the King. Mountain, you will bow before the feet of the King. All of my past mistakes, you will bow before the feet of the King. All of my past sins, you will bow before the feet of the King. There's nothing too hard for God. It will bow before the feet of the King. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for your God. There's nothing too hard for your God. You will bow before the feet. How many know that we have been given power by God to move mountains out of our way? We can speak to the mountain and tell it to move, and it must move at the name of Jesus. It must move at the name of Jesus, and I'm here to declare that. We got a song today that's going to declare the fact that we have power manifested from on high to move mountains. Hallelujah.
Oh, great mountain, move out of my way, move out of my way. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way, move out of my way. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way, move out of my way. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. I sing to the valleys. I sing to the valleys. And I'll dance through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll dance through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll dance through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll dance through the valley of the shadow of death. I sing to the valley. I sing to the valley. Cause nothing can stop our God. 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 Lift it up. Say, nothing can stop our God. Nothing can stop our God. Rising in the room, let's keep singing it. Oh, oh great mountain, move out of my way. You gotta say it with authority right now. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. You no longer have power to stay in my life, great mountain. Oh, great mountain, you gotta move, move out, out of my way. way. You gotta move out of my way. You gotta move out of my way. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Triumph into the river of life. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. I jump into the river of life. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. I drink from the well that never runs dry. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. It keeps me strengthened to speak to the mountain. Oh, great mountain, then move, move out, out of my way. way. Speak to the mountain right now. Oh, great mountain. You better move, move out, out of my way. Hey. Oh, great mountain. Move out of my way. You gotta move. You gotta move. Right oh, great now. mountain. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Oh, great mountain. Move out of my way. Right here. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. Move out of my way. You can't stay here any longer. Oh, great mountain, move out of my way. I drink from the well of living water. I drink from the well of living water. And it never runs dry, oh Lord. I said it never runs dry, oh Lord. I drink from the well of living water. I drink from the well of living water. And it never runs dry, oh Lord. And it never runs dry, oh Lord. Oh, 
great mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Move out of my way. Open your mouth. Move out of my way. Come on, the enemy wants you to stay silent, but open your mouth. Oh, great mountain. Say, move out of my way. You got to move out of my way. Clap your hands. 
If I give you my cup, I know that it will, I know that it will run over. So I can he take a drink. So Jesus, Jesus, you satisfy. But you are a well, but you are a well that won't run dry. You don't discriminate or only give us what we need. You go over and beyond. If I give you my cup, if I give you my cup, I know that it will run I know that it will run over. Take a drink. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you satisfy me. You will let one dry up. Hey. So I keep drinking. You will let one dry up. Come on, so I keep drinking, drinking, drinking. Oh, you will let one dry up. Come on, let's sing your hands down. So I keep drinking. We can 
a drink at the same time. Take a drink if I need me. Take a drink. We can all drink at the same time. 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 We cannot 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 drink at the same time.
ashes over. Let us be made new. Let us be made new. Wash us over. Wash us over. Wash us over, let us be, let us be made new. Wash us over, wash us over, let us be made new. Let us be made new. Wash us over, wash us over. Come on, cry it out. Let us be made new. Let us be made new. Wash us over, wash us over. Let us be made new. Let us be made new. Wash us over, let us be made new, 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 let us be made new. sun 
So I go out there, I plant them. I spend all this time putting them in the ground. And Sydney, three days, they stayed up. And then I started to see them wilt. And I said, God, what's going on? They're in the sun. They're sunflowers. What's the problem? And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and talk to me. And he said, you can't leave them out here because just like any other flower, they will dry up. You can't not nourish them and cultivate them. You can't, they can't go without water. They still need a source. The sun is not their only source. So I dare you the next time you call on the name of Jesus, I dare you to declare and decree that he's not only the son of God, but he's whatever I need him to be. He's El Shaddai. He's Elohim. He's El Adonai. That's why he's Jehovah. That's why he's Yahweh. Anybody made new in this room? Who has tasted of the living water that God has given unto you? He said, he who drinks shall never thirst again. Shall never thirst again. That the Lord is good. Shall never thirst again. That the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Hallelujah. I'll taste and see. I'll taste and see. He said, when you drink of this water, you shall never thirst again. I'll taste and see. It should spring up from out of you like a well to everlasting life. I want you to realize something, that when you took a drink of that living water, you didn't drink so that you can drink again. But you drunk so you don't have to be thirsty no more. God says, I will set provision before you. Everything that you need, I will supply. You will have need of nothing. You will never lack again. All you have to do is take a drink. You will never thirst again. I remember a a story in the Bible. Jesus came into a town with his disciples. And they didn't want him to stop. They were questioning why he did. And he sat beside this woman who was by a well, and he asked for a drink. And the thing about this story is that he was asking a Sumerian woman. Jews did not get along with these type of people. So it was already strange to his disciples that he was asking her for a drink. It was even strange to her. Like, why are you asking me for a drink? But then he begins to tell her that if you understood who is speaking with you, you would understand that I'm not even talking about this well. But listen, woman, and I'm paraphrasing. If you realized who I was and the type of water that I can give, man, you'll be rejoicing right now. You will be jumping up and down right now. And I don't know about you, but back in 2010, I had this same encounter. The Lord visited me. And he said, son, all you have to do is take a drink. 
and you will never thirst again. You go to and fro looking for answers, looking for truth, and looking for understanding. But he said, all you have to do is just drink, and you will never thirst again. And I don't know who I'm talking to in this room, but all he is saying is just take a drink, for this well leads to everlasting life. Amen? 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 Hallelujah. Listen, as we transition into our time of giving, I want you to ready yourselves for what the Lord has to say to his people on today. I believe that it's going to be a timely word. I believe that the Lord wants to speak to the hearts of his people. So listen, think it not strange if the word speaks directly to you. I believe we're going to have some of those moments today where you're going to look at the, <laughs> the teacher today and say, they must know what's happening in my life. Because they're speaking directly to me. I believe that transformation is going to take place in this room. And I say, don't fight against it. But heed the instruction of the Lord as he begins to reveal to you what he has to say. Listen, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. We have Miss Larissa standing right there in the middle aisle. Just raise your hand. She'll get you an envelope if you want to give. On our website, you can do that as well. You can go to www.contagious.church. We are one church with two locations, one in Tampa, this one here in Charlotte. If you just find the Charlotte location, hit give. Follow the promptings. It's very simple. You can also text to give. In the message box of your phone, put give CLT to number 813-308-0638. That is give CLT to 813-308-0638. Three zero eight zero six three eight. You can also do PayPal, paypal.me backslash Contagious Charlotte. If you haven't already, go to your app store, download Contagious Church app. Take advantage of the great resources and tools that are on there. Uh, you can give on there. You can read your Bible on there. You can catch up with sermons. And you can learn more about the ministry. I definitely encourage you to download that app. But if you, it's the same way as the website. Find the Charlotte location. Hit the give button, follow the promptings. You can also cash app us, money sign, contagious CLT. Listen, the most important thing is that you give. As you purpose it in your heart, let them give. We give generously, we give cheerfully, and we give contagiously here at this church. That's why we don't have to beg you for anything. Because I believe that God has sent people who have a heart and a desire to sow into his kingdom, to sow into his body, and to sow into his church. So we don't have to beg you for anything, but I want you to be obedient to whatever the Lord is leading you to do. We want to say thank you to those who have decided to partner alongside us and just believe God for what he has in store for this church. We can't do this without you, and I want to encourage you and let you know that your giftings are going a long way, and they're being used for the edification of God's kingdom. I assure you that every seed that is sown is having a great impact. So once again, and then we'll pray and I'll get out of your way. www.contagious.church. Find a shorter location. If you're feeling generous, you can hit the Tampa location as well. Follow the promptings there. PayPal.me backslash Contagious Charlotte. You can text to give. Give COT in the message box to 813-308-0638. You can also go to your app store, download our Contagious Church app. Type in the Charlotte location, hit give, follow the promptings, and last but not least, cash app, money sign, contagious, CLT. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, I thank you for these, your people, Lord. I thank you, God, for them purposing it in their hearts to give, for you have sent people, God who have a desire and, a, and just a willingness, Father God, to sow and to give into your kingdom, God. So I thank you, God, that their hearts are in the right place on today. Lord, I pray that whatever it is, God, that they are believing you for, God, that you would count it unto them as righteousness, Father. Lord, I pray that they will see a hundredfold return even now in the name of Jesus as they believe you, God, as you stretch them, as they trust and put their faith in what you can do. 
We're believing you for supernatural blessings, Father God. Miraculous turnarounds right now in the name of Jesus, God. And I pray for every seed, God. I pray for every sower. I pray for every gift and I pray for every giver, God, that is sown into this good ground. For where there is good ground, there shall be a great harvest, God. I pray that you would use it to open up doors and create opportunities, God, for your word to be disseminated into all the world, God, into every region, every territory, every city, every state, every country, every nation, and every continent, Father God. For we believe that there is still work to do, God. So I pray that these gifts, God, would be used, God, to create opportunities and spaces and environments and platforms, God, for us to take this word where it needs to go. And Lord, I pray that as we ready ourselves to hear from you, God, that you would open up our hearts to receive with thus saith the Lord God. Lord, I pray against hard-heartedness, God, and that you would give us a heart of flesh right now, a heart of compassion right now, God. I pray that you would open up our eyes to see you differently, open up our ears to hear you differently, God. Nudge your people in this room, Father, that we may heed and hear what you have to say. I pray that you would stir up every gift, God, on the inside of your prophet, God, let her release God with tenacity. Lord, let her release God with boldness, God, with courage and confidence, Lord. Lord, I pray that the fire that is rumbling on the inside of her, Father God, would be used, God, to burn up everything that is not like you, God. Everything that's in the way, let it move right now, God, that your people may hear and heed the transformative word that will be released in this room on today, God. Let us not be the same after hearing what you have to say. But let us forever be changed, God. Now anoint your voice box, God. Crown her even now, Father God, with the anointing, God. Use her mightily, God, in this room. Have your way. And we will forever give you the praise, the honor, and glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name and for your glory alone, Father. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord with me in this place. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. He's truly worthy to be praised and adored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That should be your prayer today. Lord, take my life. Take my life, oh God. Take my thoughts. Take my circumstances. Take my situations. Take everything that doesn't please you. Purge me, oh God. Purge me, oh God. Clean me up, Father, to be used for your glory. I want to be tried by the fire. I want to be purified. I want to be holy. I want to be used for his great works. Oh, try me, oh God. Try me, Father. Purify me, Father. Yes, oh God. Hey. Yes, yes. Come on, if that's you. Come on, stand to your feet. Tell the Lord to try you by the fire. Tell him to burn everything up that doesn't give him glory. Tell him to take it away. Whatever doesn't look like you, oh God. Take it away, Father. Take it away, oh God. Take it away, Father. Shut up, my Purify us, oh God. For your great work, oh God. Shred by the fire. You take whatever you desire. Let me tell you a little bit about that. It's, it's a courtesy for us. Can you turn this mic just down a little, just a little? It's a courtesy for us to even tell him to take it. Let me teach you just a little bit. We are not our own. So we really don't have to tell the Lord to take anything from us. My God. Woo. How many know that we are not our own? How many are truly living that? I know we've been taught live your best life. 
You only live once. Do you, boo? Do what makes you happy. You're not your own. So God has free reign to do whatever he wants to do with us. See, the Bible tells us don't allow the, 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 the cares of this world to choke out the word that's inside of us because we're made in his image. So therefore, we're made in his word. And so if we're walking around this earth and we are overcome and uh, by the world's things and we are perplexed and in despair by what's going on in the earth, we have to look to our source. We have to look to our creator. When our children are in need of something, they look to the parents. I, I was reminded this week, I said, God, you said this. You told me this. You promised me this. This is your word. This is, I am not my own. So you have to move, God. Right? It's a courtesy. Take whatever you desire. No, no, no. Here. I, here. Here. That's it. That's it, Michelle. I surrender it all. I lay it at your feet, God. Not my will, but your will. Jesus was the example. We know you'll be tempted. We know you'll be tempted, but not beyond. The enemy want him to be tempted beyond. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. He's the son of God. He's the son of God. We are children of the most high God. What? You have to know that. I am a king's kid. My daddy said. My daddy said. My daddy said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. My daddy said he owns a cattle on a thousand hill. My daddy said money answereth all things. My daddy said he is our refuge. Oh, my daddy said he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. My daddy said he is the answer. My daddy said he's Jehovah Jireh. My daddy said he is God Almighty. My dad said he is a healer. My daddy said he is a deliverer. Woo! We have to be reminded today. We have to be reminded today of where our power comes from, where our strength comes from, where our assignments come from. If you get into the mindset of how can I collide with you, how can I join you in today? How can I, how, how can I link up with you today from, for the life you've given me? Not even my life, but the life you've given me. That removes us out of the way. It removes us out of the equation because sometimes we can get up and we can think that it's, this is our own. We can get up and we can think that I'm in control of this. And we're not, we're not smart enough. We are not equipped enough. We are not powerful enough. We don't have enough wisdom and we do not have enough knowledge to control this body. <laughs> and then let alone everybody else in the world. So a lot of our issues, a lot of our situations and circumstances will be annihilated if we get up and say, Lord, how can I meet you today? How can I collide with you today? What does it look like for me today? What do you want me to do today? How should I go about it today? What does it look like? Listen. Mm. The Lord does not want us to live these mediocre lives, and he also don't want us to live a life that we think we need to build. Let me say that again. He doesn't want us to live a mediocre life, but he also don't want us to live a life that we have decided to build. We live and we move and we have our being in him, in him, in him, only in him. 
So everything else is meaningless. The Bible says it's vanity. It's meaningless. Everything. Oh, shit. Hey, shut up. All things are permissible, but are they profitable? They're good things, but is it God? It's good, but is it God? I was telling Apostle Reggie this week, I don't want to be connected to anything that's good and it's not God. I don't care who it is, what it looks like, what it's attached to, who brought it to me, who said you need to do this or do that. If it's not God, I don't want anything to do with it because we don't have time to waste. There's too much going on in this earth that we have to raise up an army of people, my God, an army of people to destroy. And we are worried about what, what should I wear or what, what, what hustle I should have this week. It's good, but is it God? We have to get back to the power source. We have to get back to, to listen, seeking after him for everything in our lives. Not just halfway, not just a quarter, but all things in our lives. Prophetess Ann started praying this morning, and she started talking about Acts 2. I said, oh, my gosh, she's in my sermon. And then Prophetess Keandra got up here and talked about, where is your power source from? And I said, oh, my God, here we go. I said, there she go. There she go. You can be seated if you can, but stay there just for a second. The Lord had given me this word before even Apostle Reggie spoke on Pentecost Sunday. Because a lot of times, let me tell you this, let me give you this slight disclaimer. A, a, a lot of my assignment is to tear down and build you up. So a lot of times when I come and I teach the word of God, it's to tear down the things you thought or things you have been taught. And then I need to line them up with the word of God, how he tells us to do things in context. And so a lot of times we get to Pentecost Sunday and we just believe it's supposed to be one Sunday where the fire of God releases and that's it. And then we go throughout the rest of the week being hellish, crazy, <laughs> sinful, all of the above, right? But Pentecost Sunday was not just one Sunday. It was, an, it was a move of God, a continuous move of God. A continuous move of God. And, you, and you're going to ask me how, and I'm going to tell you. But it's a continuous move of God. It wasn't just supposed to be one day that you got doused with the fire of God and you're speaking in new tongues. It was supposed to be a continuous and unlimited an unlimited power source. An unlimited power source. Not just one day, not just one time, but a continuous. Are you listening to me today? A continuous flow of the power of God. A continuous flow of his spirit. A continuous flow. So I went and I looked up the definition of unlimited because that's the series we're in. And he, the definition to unlimited is not limited or restricted in terms of number, quantity, or extent. Let me say that again. The definition of unlimited is not limited or restricted in terms of number, quantity, or extent. And so I want to teach you on today that your unlimited power source comes from God. Comes from God and God alone. And the, and the text is Acts 2. You can go there with me in your Bible. 17, we're going to start out 17. Acts 2, 17. And I know you heard this. Like I said, Apostle Reggie did a phenomenal job on the first Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday, teaching about how we all came on one accord and, and our tongues were laced with fire and we spoke in new tongues and, and everybody was on one accord. And, and they felt the power of God. They experienced him. Amen. So Acts 2, 17 and 19, and I'm reading out the English Standard Version. It says, and in the last days it shall be God declares that I will pour out my pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy 
and your young men shall vi- uh, your m- young men shall see vision. Excuse me, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days. I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show one. Listen to this. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and a vapor of smoke. I want to read 19 one more time because I want you to get this in your spirit and I will show wonders. It's plural wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. I want you to understand that when he's pouring out his spirit, it's not necessarily for him to be glorified in heaven, but for him to be glorified in the earth. So we can walk around showing his power, right? If we have to, we have to understand that our unlimited power source only comes from God, the triune God, right? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we have here in the earth is the comforter, the Holy Spirit that gives us power, that gives us strength, that gives us vision, that gives us sight, instruction, wisdom, all of the above. Amen. But I want you to understand that we have in the earth today is God, Jesus, in the flesh, and Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, and that people would have you to believe that the power source (laughs) is this is this is what the enemy does he gets you connected to a demonic power source whatever it is that be cards tarot cards uh i'm just going to talk about it right uh psychics um zodiac signs and he wants you to tap into those power sources and the minute something happens that connects you to that power source you do it again right so if you've read your your horoscope which is called a horoscope i don't know why y'all listening to that anyway and then the zodiac was created by anyway you get up you say oh this is my horoscope for today this is what this is what they're going to say and then it happens and so then you get up the next day And you want to read it again because it happens. And then you get up the next day and you read it again because it happens. And you get up and then you don't even realize at this time that you're connected to a false power source. This is the same unlimited power source that God wants us to demonstrate in the earth. See, Acts 2 was not necessarily uh, uh, just, it wasn't a one-time event. It was for witnessing and demonstration. Let me say that again. The Pentecost Sunday came up on the people. It was supposed to be for witness and demonstration in the earth. You know, I grew up in a missionary Baptist church, so we didn't speak in tongues, but there was one lady. Whenever she could, she would get up and speak in tongues, and (laughs) and she would just release it, and we would just look in amazement because she had been endued with power that the missionary Baptist church just wasn't talking about. But it, w- it was intriguing because I'm like, what is that? What is that? And so even from a little girl, I was like, I-, I want that. I want that. I want that. Because I knew there was power in it. Right? And a lot of times churches has taught us to, to do these things in entertainment. Like who can speak the loudest in tongues? Whose tongues is the most eloquent or whose the tongues is? No, that's not why the Lord released his power upon the people. He released his power upon the people so we can have witness and demonstration in the earth. I don't know if you've seen 2020 where they did a study on speaking in tongues. Few, this was several years ago. This was probably in the 90s. And they did a CAT scan of somebody speaking in English, and they can see the, the neurons or whatever in your brain moving, and then the person was speaking in tongues, and they put them through the CAT scan, and they didn't see any movement in the language departments in their brain. Yeah, yeah, look it up. It's on 2020. So if you're telling me that we have control of our language and our speaking, you can see it in our brain, and that we don't have control over our tongue, then you know it comes from an unlimited power source called God, Yahweh. Let's make it very clear, big G. We have to understand that because there are several examples in the Bible where there is a demonic power source that came in. Everybody knows this, right? And if you don't, I'm going to share just a little bit. With Moses, when he went up to Pharaoh and, and, and him and Aaron was doing these things, God said, do this, right? And then Pharaoh's uh, magicians came and said, we can do that too, right? 
And so if you're not discerning in this season, the very elect will be deceived. So if you say, oh, Oh, I'm healed. No, who were you healed by? Right? We're not talking about no shaman and no medicine men. We're talking about where did you get that 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 power source from? But it's very <laughs> important that you un know understand that God's unlimited power doesn't fail. It doesn't lose, right? Because the magicians did almost everything but a few things they could not do because their source did not come from God. And I want you to understand today that you can't do anything outside of his will because your power is limited. I can pick this phone up, right? That, that's about as, <laughs> as limited as, as, as we can get. But I want you to understand that if it's a legit power source, then they would have been able to continue to demonstrate their magician things if it was legit. But since it wasn't legit, they, the magicians even had to concede. And I and I so I said I said okay Lord I, I hear you let me let me tell you the definitions of conceding it's admitting that something is true or valid at first denying or resisting it so the magicians had to concede because at first they were doing the magic and all they thought they they had the great legit <laughs> power source but then they had to concede and admit listen listen Pharaoh what they doing I I, I can't do because they source comes from something else. And so I want you to understand, will we understand, when will we understand the limited, unlimited power source is through the triune God and him alone? When will we grasp it, people of God? When will we understand that it only comes from him? I know that you get up and that your flesh tells you that I'm doing this and that, you know, listen, I have tons of degrees, tons of certificates, and I tell you, I probably can't get a job at Walmart because that's not the assignment on my life at the moment, right? And I say that with all due respect, it's because we have to understand that we cannot do anything outside of his will. We can, but we shouldn't because it doesn't line up with his word, and then you waste your time and energy. You waste your time and energy, and you kill your witness. If we are operating in the unlimited power source of God, speaking in tongues, casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick, teaching, prophesying, declaring, decree, all of these things, we have to know where they come from. We have to understand that we are not our own. When she started singing, you know, I, m we, we have to be tried by the fire because it's a, it's a continuation of getting up every morning and crucifying to your flesh, crucifying, dying to your own desires, dying to your own wants and the things that you feel like you need in the earth. And really, like I said, colliding with Holy Spirit. What do you want to do? There are so many times that we have gotten ourselves caught up in things and then we beg God to get us out of them. And how about we just do this and we just tell, ask him what he want us to do so we don't have to beg him to get us out of it. Amen. And so when we hear about the day of Pentecost, like I said, that Apostle Reggie preached on first Sunday, we think about it as only one moment in time. And although it was a specific event, it was supposed to be the launching of an unlimited source of power for all believers, right? And I must make this very clear, it's believers only because we know <laughs> that although it rains on the unjust and the unjust, only the people who are truly believers, truly dedicated to God, living upright and holy um, and righteous before him get these gifts, right? We get into the habit of trying to establish covenant, my God, with those not of this foe and it simply does not work like that. We try to pull people who are not of this fold. We try to pull people, oh, yes, you can do this, you can do that. But no, you have to look at, first of all, is their lives connected with the unlimited power source? Are they living holy and righteous? Do they want to live like God has called them to live? But there are contractual benefits for us who live in God, right? They're, they're, they're. The, one of the benefits is that we, we have power, we have stamina, we have grace, we have mercy that's new every morning. And, and those who do not, <laughs> they do not, right? Even during the day of Pentecost when the power fell and they all started to speak in new tongues, this gets me because the mockers was like, are they drunk? <laughs> what are they doing? You know, it's early in the morning. This is the third hour of the day. And, and Peter started to say, no, they were not. And some of the faith may have thought that they were drunk, too. Let me say that again. 
some of the people in the faith may have thought, ooh, I don't know about this. I don't want this. How many times have you went to somebody and said, Do you, you, are you ready to speak in tongues? Are you ready to receive the power of the bapti- your baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they're like, no, I'm not ready yet. And then we're like, but why? Why? Because you may be the only Bible that some people see. You may be the only demonstration, the only witness that people see. And if you have no example, if you have no evidence of its power, what are you doing? What are we doing? Right? What are we doing? Jesus. (laughs) I know this. Y'all a little quiet today. Y'all was a little, y'all a little quiet, but I want you to understand today and be reminded of our unlimited power source only comes from God. It, it doesn't come from anything else. It only comes from God, and he pours it out on all flesh. You know, a lot of times we get to um, denominational issues when they don't let women preach or pray or prophesy. They only let the women teach, or they only let the women <laughs> hang out with the kids. Um, but in throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible, he spoke about pouring out his spirit and he is, is a continuous flow. It means it's unlimited, right? It's not restricted. It is this numbers, this quantity to extend. He wanted people to understand that I'm giving you my power so you can do A, B, C, and D. And then when they do something crazy, he tells them again, I'm pouring out my spirit, You know, even, and I'm going to get to this in just a second, but even back in Exodus when Moses was going up to the top of the mountain, he was was telling them then that he wanted to pour out his spirit on everybody, but they kind of got a little scared. And I wonder if they got a little scared because they weren't really living right. And so this is your moment to even have a moment with God and say, Lord, cleanse me up, purify me. I repent because I want to carry your spirit. I want you to lead me and guide me everywhere that I go because I can't do nothing without you. We have to have those those and those um, humble moments when we know we can't do anything without God. I can't drive this car. I can't cook this meal. How many of you cook and the Lord will be like, add a little salt here, add a little pepper here? I got a few hands. Okay, raise your hands bigger than that. Thank you. I'm the. I'm, he was like, okay, put a little salt, put a little garlic in here, and I'm like, he. We matter that much to God. We matter that much, and so this leads me to confirm that we all are capable of carrying and producing the power of God, and that it is a vital part that we stay with Him. That we move the mountains out of our way, <laughs> right? that we stay with him because if we find ourselves out of alignment, there's all kind of foolishness we can get ourselves in. Stay with him. Repeat after me. Stay with him. Stay with him because he has the unlimited power source. Because he has the unlimited power source. Amen. And so with that, y'all know we have a dog. His name is Legend. And when we got legend, the first, I want to tell you, three months, two months, you open up the front door, pew, he was like, you same boat. You open up the garage, pew, he was like, you same boat. Because we had trained him when you open up the back door and it says back door open. He goes out, he does his business, he can run around freely in the back because it's gated. But then when you open up the front door, he doesn't know what's out there. So he was just running, I mean, running amok. Do you hear me running all up and down our street? We all running in flip-flops, screaming his name. I mean, all the time. And I said, no, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to train him because what? we're the masters, right? <laughs> we're his masters. You do what I tell you to do. You sit when I tell you to sit. You lay when I tell you to lay. You stay when I tell you to stay. This is the same thing as the unlimited power. So as God is telling you, sit when I tell you to sit. Stay when I tell you to stay. Run when I tell you to run. Walk when I tell you to walk. If I don't speak, you don't move. Right? And then some of us need a little bit more training. (laughs) Then I got my treat. Some of us need a little bit more training than others. You know, Tatiana might got glory. I'm sure y'all, it didn't take y'all a good month to, to tell her when glory comes to the house, glory come here outside and she comes. So he's like, listen, legend, you're going to have to get it together. Because if, if his, <laughs> I'm telling y'all, 
I got, I got more of a story because I want you to understand that your unlimited power source is only through God. It's only through the Holy Spirit. And he has to walk with you everywhere that you go. He has to be with you everywhere that you go. When he speaks, you speak. When he don't speak, you be quiet. If there's a decision you need to make, you need to converse with him. Right? Right? Yes. Everybody's shaking. Yes. So one day, so we, we did maybe about a good two weeks. So when he hears front door open, he just waits. <laughs> right? So that was the first thing. And so we give him a treat. Good boy. Good job, legend. And, uh, and then he goes around his way. And then we go to the garage door. Garage door open. And he just waits. Right? And then he goes to the back door. Back door open. He knows he's free to go. We've been doing good. Now the next lesson is to stay. Because now I tell you to sit, you sit, but when I walk out this door, you walk in with me. And I need you to stay. Now follow me. This is how the Holy Spirit is. This is how he's training us. So now I have to give you two treats. I need you to sit and I need you to stay. So sit and stay. So now I'm backing out the door. His tail is just a wagon. His, but he didn't move, right? So we go to the garage door. Sit, legend. Stay. He just a wagon, but he doesn't move because he has learned to listen to the source. He's learned to listen to the source. Even TJ, sit boy, sit boy, and he listens, right? <laughs> come, come, and he listens because he's learned to listen to the source. One day, one day, one day, Azariah had both of the laundry room doors open, had the garage up. And I was like, it's awfully quiet in here. Where is the dog? Nobody knows where the dog is. So I go to the doors. Legend walked out of the house, out of the laundry room, out of the garage. He's all in the neighborhood. <laughs> and so since Azariah left the doors open, who going out there to find him? Azariah. So Azariah is booking. He going. He going to find him. He brings legend. And legend knows he's in trouble. So his tail is between his legs and he's walking like this. And I said, get your butt in this house. You know we don't do that. But then the Lord jacked me up. He said, that's what happens when you don't walk with the power source. Oh, yeah. He said, that's what happens when you're not walking with me. There's doors open that I may or may not have opened. And since no one was watching, or you thought wasn't watching, you walk right out them doors. So if we understand that if we continuously walk with the power source, we won't be running amok in the neighborhood. We won't be running, having to find somebody to go find him because he doesn't know his way out there. Have y'all walked this road before? No. Have, we, have I walked this road before? No. The Bible even, it's in the Old Testament. He said, walk a few miles behind the Ark of the Covenant because you haven't walked this way before. And if I turn this way, I need you to flow with me. So you need to be just a little bit feet be behind so you know which way I turn. It's a lot of us are like legend. The doors just open. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and then you get yourself caught up out there. <laughs> and then we got to send a prophet. <laughs> An intercessor <laughs> to go and fetch you out there. And don't be like some people. I, listen, I had, I had a time these past couple of weeks. Somebody told me, I can hear from God myself. I don't need you to talk to me. Okay, y'all don't be like that. The Lord will send people. He will send people your way to help. He sent Azariah. I sent Azariah out there to go get legend because he did something contrary to my leading because I wasn't there. And you will do something contrary to the leading on your life if he's not there. And some of you have to repent because you have ignored the, the, the Holy Spirit so long that he is no longer there. And you're, it's called a reprobate mind. Let me teach you a little bit. 
I know that's a big word, but a reprobate mind only means I'm leaving you to your own desires, thoughts, and wants. And after you've done it for so long, you don't even know that it's not. not. You are so comfortable in your own desires, thoughts, and wants. Then you say, oh, God is with me. He is not. He's not. He's not, and we cannot be like that. We have to understand that having the unlimited power of God allows us to have access to him and him alone. So if I have a leash on legend in the front, guess where he stays? With me. There's sometimes we're still training him if he sit because he's still excited. I know this is practical. Hopefully you're getting this. Hopefully you're understanding so even if we're in the garage or even if we're in the back, sometimes I can sit in the chair and he'll sit and I have to constantly say, you need to stay. Stay. But he gets excited because he's a puppy. And the Lord sends people in your way to say, Com- calm down just a little bit. We're a training church. Calm down just a little bit. Com- just a little bit. And then we can, we can, I can pick him up and move a little bit down the sidewalk. Okay, just stay. And then when I'm seeing German shepherds come down, then now let me put his leash on. Because he may get too excited to play with that dog, and that dog may not like little puppies. The Lord wants you to understand. He wants you to get it. That the power source benefits us. It benefits legend for me to have him on a leash until he's fully trained because he, he doesn't understand what cars are. Right? I've been this road before. You, you, listen, I've been this way before. I'm saving you. I tell you that all the time. I'm just a few steps ahead of you. There's a few things that I've done with, that I've dealt with a few steps ahead of you because I've, I'm connected to the power source and I can help you along the way, but you just got to listen. It was rough. The first <laughs> it was rough, but it was worth it. It's worth it. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where the Lord is releasing his spirit upon you and you're unwilling to accept it because you think you're big and bad or you think that you've gotten it together or you think you have enough. You know, you know, yeah, see, church folks just drive me crazy. Let me just put that out. Not y'all. Not y'all. Y'all, y'all the saints of God. I'm talking about church folks. Y'all know the difference. You got to be, I need this title and this title and sit me up here and I have this prestige and this. And then you're like the seven sons of Sceva and being tore up when it's time to cast out a demon. All, none of that matters. None of that matters. Titles and all those positions, none of those things matter. It matters if you're connected to the power source. It's if you're mature in the word of God and witnessing and demonstration. There's me, I just got an official title, but I've been walking with God my entire life. I have history with him. Right? I have history with him. So it's not the, the title of prophetess or pastor that you reverence. It's the oil on my life. Because I'm connected to the power source. And s- mm. Some of y'all follow people who are not even connected to the power source anymore. But since they know how to act real well, y'all think it's God. I don't know why the Lord has y'all real quiet today. Y'all real quiet today. I'm trying to I'm trying to raise the people up to understand that none of this stuff matters. The only thing that matters if that's you're connected to God and that you're doing exactly what he's calling you to do. I really just feel in my spirit. We just really need to pray today. We just, li- y'all feeling it too, prophets? Listen, this is the Lord's doing. Go ahead and start playing a little bit. You know, I, I don't mind doing, you know, moving with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the mature children of God move by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to move by, come on, Walter, we're going to move by the Holy Spirit on today. Because I feel like a lot of you have gotten into these ruts and into these situations. And we'll we'll teach later, but uh, in in situations where God is saying, I need those things to be broken up. I I, I, I need those things to be pushed out of the way. Because sometimes we can look at our situations and those things become idols. 
We can look at somebody else's situation and we can, we can covenant what they have. We can look at somebody else's situation and we don't even know the power source that they got whatever they got from. And then we can become jealous and envious of that. And then we can compare ourselves and say, well, this is, I'm, I'm trying to live my best life. No, we have to live our life in Christ. And I believe that once we realize that we truly are not our own and that he is our source for everything, then we go to him, we get what we need, and then we're powerful in the earth. Then we're strengthened in the earth. Then we understand. Then we have wisdom to make decisions. But if we're going to different power sources, if we're looking at crystals, and, and, and if we're, we, if we, God is not pleased. He's not pleased with, let, let me, let me, let me say this. You may not be going to crystals. You may not be looking at your horoscopes. You may not be looking at, at, at witch doctors and psychics and mediums and all this. But if you're coming up with stuff on your own accord, that's just as bad. If you're, if you're deciding on things without God and you say, well, this is best for me, that's still not God. Amen? And there are some decisions that you have to make in your life, some of you very quickly. Which way do I go? Which way do I turn? What does this look like? And God is saying, if you just look at me, if you just really, you know, the Bible says in Psalm 37, 4, that uh, those who delight in the Lord, he will give them the desires of their heart. And so we have pervertedly thought that it meant he will give me my desires, right? That it's my desire to be a painter. I love the arts. I want to do this. No, the revelation is that he gives us the desire. Meaning, since he formed us, since he, 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 he created us, he puts inside of us the desires that he wants for our lives to fulfill in the earth. But we believe it's because of what I like. It's my passion. It's my love. It what gets me up in the morning. No, sometimes what God wants us to do does not get me up in the morning. Do you hear me? Especially when it's three. But since I'm not my own, I have to get my tail up and see what he's saying. And so sometimes I just feel a washing. A washing of our own desires. A washing of our own circumstances. Our minds and our thoughts that have been perverted to think that we, want it, we can do what we want to do. That we can go where we want to go. I never in a million years thought I would end up in Charlotte, North Carolina. That wasn't on the radar for my life. But since all things work together for my good, we're here. And we got to raise up an army of people who knows that their unlimited power source only comes from God. It only comes from the Holy Spirit. There's, not, there's nothing else in the earth. There is not a magician. There's not a witch nor a warlock. There's no, no side of darkness that can lead and guide you to the truth in God. Stand to your feet. Prophets Keanu, there's a stirring in your belly. You're gonna release a word of song over these people. Now, if you wanna listen to the sermon, catch me on Contagious TV. But there is, the Lord wants to endue us with strength and power. He wants to strip us from the very things we thought was him. He wants to tear down the things that you have idolized. Some of you have even idolized praising the name of the Lord thinking that it'll get you out of situations. My God. 
God says, that's not me. It's what you've been taught. He says, don't use me for something, but use me as your source. He wants us to get back into the habit of relying solely upon him for our marriage, our children, our jobs, whatever, because those things will give him the glory. And I hear in the spirit, which job should I apply for? Which job should I take? Where should I go? And God says he's going to lead you to the place. Don't look at the money. Don't look at the drive. Don't look at gas prices. He said, follow me. Apostle Reggie and myself have a testimony. Many years ago when we moved to Florida, we had just had Azariah. And there was a job. And it was $10 an hour. And Reggie said, I'm not taking this. I'm not taking this job. $10 an hour is not going to feed my family. And the Lord said, you're going to take it. Reluctantly, repentively, he took the job. And it was not 30 days before he got an understanding that they were going to shut the job down. But there was another company that was coming to that job every day and watching him work. So in a matter of 30 days, that company shut down and the company that was watching him said, I want you to come work for me. And it was, yes, you can put your hands together. And it was a salary far beyond what he could take to take care of the family and a perfect schedule. Because he got there and there had been people there for 15 or 20 years that didn't have his schedule. And was like, well, how did you come in here and get this perfect schedule? Because he had a repentive heart. <laughs> when he turned and said what he wasn't going to do. And God said, no, but this is what you're going to do because I'm going to open the door. And if you're with me, I'll show favor on your life. I'll show favor on your life. If you're with me wholeheartedly, not halfway, not your own desires, not your own fleshly wants, but him, he'll show you and he'll lead you. You'll be like legend who's listening to his master right beside me. Oh, You ready, prophetess Keandra? Oh, shit. Some of you have to disconnect from your family members because even their thinking is not your thinking and it has caused you to reserve back to old ways. I'm just going to call it out. That hustle mentality. I'm just going to hustle until I get it. That's not of God. If it's you, say ouch, repent, and keep it moving. For those who have taken all their situation and experiences, and you have set them on an altar, and you get up every day, and you talk about it, you breathe it, you live it, you eat it, repent. God says that's not his best for you. Those who are slothful and lazy. God says the kingdom of God does not belong to the slothful or the lazy. You got to get to work. What I see in the spirit is an army rising up. And there's soldiers in their place. And there's people that's going throughout the soldiers, helping them put on their armor. If you're lazy, you're not helping people put their armor on. Oh God, renew us, Father. Those who have a victim mentality, everybody do me like this. Everybody does me like this. It's always me. I'm always the one being hurt. God said that is not of him. 
He says, rise up. It's your season of maturity. Come up, come up. Hey, little shit in a shata. Hey, little sata, my little shit in a shata. Hey, little sata. The day of Pentecost was a launching of witnessing and demonstration in the earth. Hey, little sata. Let me say that again. Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost Day was a launching of witnessing and demonstration in the earth. Hey, little shata. If you carry the power of God, you have to witness. If you carry the power of God, you have to demonstrate it. Some of you say, I don't even speak in tongues out loud because people don't understand. Hey, it ain't for people to understand. Oh, There's things that I need to be breaking through, broken through, that I don't have the English language. I don't have the English language. Offense, you have to go. I see it in the spirit. You are offended, you will not grow, you will not heal. If you're offended, good. You're supposed to be offended by the word of God. If this is you, get it right. He is taking note in this place today. You are supposed to be here. God has sent you here to be healed, delivered, set free, and built up. And if you are offended, you can't hear and you cannot receive. You have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice in here. Lift your voice to God. Come on, lay at his feet. Come on, pour it out to him. Pour out your heart. Pour out your frustrations. Pour out your your issues. Pour out everything unto God. This is a moment. He's going to hear your grievances. He's going to hear your grievances. He's going to hear them. He's going to hear them. And then he's going to clean you up. Come on, pour, 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 pour. Let it stir up in here. Don't just look at me. Look unto God. Look unto God. Look unto God. Hey, I shot my show too. Hey, If you're young or if you're old, come on, pour out, people of God. Pour out for your next level. Pour out for understanding. Pour out for more wisdom. Pour out for forgiveness. Pour out for repentance. Hey, I shot my Pour, 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 pour. pour. It's only a little bit more time. That he's gonna hear your grievances. Hey, I shot my Come on, pour, 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 pour onto your father, pour at his feet. Hey, I shut up my little sister. Building up soldiers. The Bible says, Who can ascend to the hills? Those with a clean hand and a pure heart. You can't ascend unless you're clean. You can't ascend unless you're clean. You can't ascend unless you're clean. Come on, pour, pour, pour. 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 Come on, some of you are going to miss your moment. Some of you are going to miss your moment in this place. Because you're not getting undignified. You're not saying, Lord, purge me. Lord, take it away. Take the taste away. Lord, every time I hear the word of God, I get offended. Every time I hear the word of God, I get offended. Take the offense away from me. Take the offense away from my heart. Come on, oh God. There's a river of people here ready to fight, ready to war. 
you to a place to heal. Everybody's not out to get you. 
that's your pain that is talking. The devil is a liar. I release you now, even from being overly critical to the things that God is seeing that you can't even recognize that it is the power of God, that is the spirit of God that is trying to get you free. For whom the Son has set free is truly free indeed. Up, out, go now in Jesus' name. Get it up, I go show. You will no longer wear, wear pain as a cloak and a garment in this season. The devil is a liar. You are connected to an unlimited power source. Therefore, you have power. Therefore, you have dominion. You have authority over the very thing that is trying to take you out. Oh, do it, Father. Let healing be your highly and ever kosho. Let healing be released in this room like no other. In the name of Jesus, God. Let them heal, God. Let them be delivered. Let them be set free. God, we declare, we decree your freedom in this house. opportunities to his people and like me you rejected the thing that God was doing and therefore you missed an opportunity listen in the days to come God is going to hallelujah listen it's not going to look like everything that you want but in fact it's going to look exactly contrary and con opposite and contrary to the things that you've been praying for. But God said, and I've opened the door. I will move before you. Listen, there is favor on the job making $10 an hour. There is provision on the job because God was literally setting you up to go to your next place. Lord, let us receive the thing that you have for us. And I hear in the realm of the spirit and you've already said in your heart and told God what you wasn't going to take, what you wasn't going to accept. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You've been praying and you wonder why you don't get breakthrough. God is saying you've rejected it in your heart. Lord, let us repent before you now. Hallelujah. In this next season, God said it's going to be uncommon. And it's not going to make sense to your finite mind. But I declare and I decree, Lord, let them receive it by the, by the spirit of God. For we walk in the spirit so that we won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Hallelujah. This last thing, and I'm going to get out of your way. Glory be unto God. Don't be fooled because the person is eloquent, that has eloquent speak. God said that I will sharpen my people's discernment in the hour, in the days to come. For they think that they will be heard because of their much speaking. But God is saying, don't be fooled because they can, they are wordsmith. Don't you know that there are devils that knows exactly what to say to get you outside of God's will and God's position. God cancel every plan, every assignment in the earth from the devil now in Jesus' name. And God, open up your people's ears that they may hear. Hallelujah. He that hath an ear, let Shobo ho. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. It's the subtle things. And you, hallelujah, glory. Listen, you have discernment. You have the unction of the Holy Spirit. 
it didn't feel right in your gut. You, there was something off. God, that is God's spirit telling you don't go there. Oh, do it, Father. God, we tear down every wall. Oh, God, we tear down every demonic system. God, we tear down every dehataboko. Uh, God, by the unlimited power of God, we tear down every, every word that is spoken contrary to the will of God. And Father, I declare over your people that they will walk in victory. I declare over your people that they will recognize and they will be not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. That the Holy Spirit, God is raising up an army. God is raising up soldiers. Get in position. Hallelujah. Get ready to war. Get in position. Get ready to fight the enemy. Get in position. Hallelujah. That the enemy may be held at pay. Glory be unto God. God said you're in a season of training. God is teaching you how to engage the enemy. God is teaching you about trigger squeeze. God is teaching you how to aim your weapon in the realm of the spirit. God is teaching you breathing techniques and everything required to engage the enemy. One shot, one kill. Oh, do it, Father. That your name may be glorified. You walk in the unlimited power of God. Therefore, there should not be anything that is going to hold you back from walking and being intentional of walking in purpose. I listen, and I sense in the realm of the spirit that you just are unsatisfied with where you are. You feel like you're just going through the motion. Yes, I'm talking to you. You feel like you're going through the motions. You get up, you wake up, and it's the same thing over and over and over. But God is saying to you this day, I'm doing a new thing. I make all things new. people come in to recognize the unlimited power source that they carry and that source comes from you any other power source is illegitimate and Ill illegal and unauthorized in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen if you need prayer we want to go ahead and open up this altar I feel a great breakthrough. I feel a great shift in this atmosphere. Because you are open and you are ready to receive what God had to say for you, God is saying unto you, listen, hallelujah, ask anything in my name. What is it that you are in need of? Ask anything according to my will, and I will hear you. And because I hear you, you will have your petitions thereof. Come, this altar is open. It's time out. It's time out for spiritual milk. God says, I'm ready to transition you to meat. Come. Build your people up, God. Build them up like no other. That we may give your name glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah, let us stand. You've, you've heard it, you've seen it, you've experienced it. There's nothing else that I can add, so I'm going to pray and dismiss and let you all go ahead and enjoy your Sunday. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for another amazing worship experience, God. We thank you that you met us here this morning, Father, and we thank you, God, that you never take your presence away from us, God. Well, Lord, if we just seek after you, God, you draw nigh to those who draw nigh unto you, God. So let us not just stay in this moment, God, but let us continue on seeking after you, God, that we may find you, God. For I believe that there's so much more that you have yet to reveal to your people, God. But Lord, I pray that you would count it unto your people, God, as they seek after you as righteousness, Father, that they may find you that they may know you, and that they may experience your unlimited love. 
your unlimited power, your unlimited grace, and your unlimited mercy, God. Be with these, your people, God, as they travel to and from, God. And camp your holy angels around them, Father God. Or wrap them in your ever-loving arms, God, that they may never depart from your presence, Lord. Now, Lord, we pray now unto him who was able to keep us from stumbling and make us stand in the glory of his presence, blameless with great joy. Be glory, honor, dominion, power, majesty, might before time now and forevermore. It's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Come on, let's say, I will make the love, the faith, and the worship of God contagious. On the count of three, we are contagious. One, two, three. We are contagious. You all be blessed. We love you. Have an amazing Sunday.